okay on this one on this one let me let me okay you wanted to know you want to know, remember you wanted to know so i'm going to lay this out for you okay this is this is what they're doing they're playing this endless rope a dope and where we're at right now is we're at the big huge house of cards that they have collapsing it's a complete and other collapse ready to go it's actually already occurring um it's taken decades to deal with these people's corruption. And what they're, you know, if I deal, you know, I can deal with different segments at different times, you know, because, um, but to focus, focus on the main stuff that's important right now, the main stuff that's important right now, is if you, you we go all the way and track back, we've got the, the, the Julie Sue, the, the uh, Shirley Weber, go, we'll go all the way back to the Kamala Harris stuff. Kamala Harris, uh, you know, AG California, you know. So we have my presidential campaigns being harassed uh, by police officers. Now, here's a very important thing. I'm an archiver, which means that when these people harass, this is an attack on a candidate. Um, you got different types of, of levels of attacks on a candidate. But you know, let me let me lay this out for you. You know, attack on an archiver is ten years in a federal penitentiary. Harassment of a candidate is also ten years in a federal penitentiary. In the in 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 the context we're talking right now. Now, uh, these people's actions, these people's actions, leading to problems, leading to financial distress or um, financial loss. Uh, leading to a loss of security uh, therefore uh, loss of security leads to uh, additional factors to be uh, equated in now into this we have a lot of different activity so I'm going to jump around a bit and give you some of these facts and they're high point facts and they might sound like they're out of chronological order and they may be not mentioned in chronological order I mean in this this little you know, phone thing here. Don't expect me to uh, give you perfect chronological order. You know, so so, we, so basically, we have a situation as of current where more than fourteen locations have been attacked. More than fourteen locations. So, when we're dealing with that many locations, and we deal with certain underlying facts there's a lot of facts to deal with a lot of arguments you know we could say that some things might be theory until they're completely proven as to the way the court of law system works okay but in a nutshell i'm going to lay this out to you because most of this most of this goes places and it's completely predictable so for over 14 locations have been hit. And if we, we have the span of time from now back to just previous to Kamala Harris uh, and her um, prosecutorial stuff in California. Now, what we have is a series of people that basically when you reveal locations what happens is you reveal locations to the court and somebody connected to the to the court okay, so what we have here is somebody somebody either connected to the court connected to the cops connected to the prosecutors or accessing information that's only in their hands or in their control uh, one way or another is basically at this point this is the statistical we're talking again more than 14 locations uh, the statistical analysis of this brings us to uh, an understanding where somebody has to be getting certain types of information and the information is not publicly available and in fact the only common denominator about anyone who would know all these locations is government only Let's, let's instill that in your head. Government only. So there is no public records. There is no 
uh, computer records, or, you know, anything that indicates these, all of these locations. The only common, common denominator for all of the locations is government. So, you know, basically we have these people that, you know, I would try to, I'd go and get, get, go to court, get these, one of these items thrown out because it's ridiculous. It's harassment. There's no logic to it. And of course, I'm demanding that I want to prosecute these parties and they want everything to go away. They don't want to prosecute these people. But, but there's something that happens. You know, generally within a, a short period of time, let's call it generally about 90 days or so, uh, or less, um, a bunch of punks come out and attack a location and do, do damage. So you could say that the argument is, is that Kamala Harris is sending punks out or somebody working for Kamala Harris is sending punks out or somebody who's a co-worker that's connected to her campaign is sending punks out. So, um, and, and, and doing violent attacks. Okay, now here's the thing. Now, now here's the thing. This changes everything, because see, now you're talking about an archive coming under attack. These are constitutional violations. These are, this is basically treason, right in the Constitution and Articles. When artifacts are damaged, destroyed, or stolen, that's death penalty. Again, read the Constitution, read the Articles. This is inescapable. You know, so... As you get, you know, so laying out these little different facts and modifiers. Okay, yeah, I had to, yeah, I had to take that. Okay, I'm back. Okay, now, um, so we're, okay, let me track along here. Um, 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 um. These violent attackers are all recorded on satellite and SAR. You know, I've got some satellite uh, imagery already confirms different stuff. Okay, there's a whole bunch of it that has to be pulled, a whole bunch of it. It's expensive. Okay, but it's, it's like, it's a situation where there's like seven overlapping satellites that grab data. You know, it's just, it's really definitive, you know, and, and inescapable. You know, and I've already got some, I've already, I've actually already displayed some of the satellite imagery on X of actual felonies that occurred, actual vehicles in the process of being stolen, you know, and uh, on satellite, you know, where, where it's being moved from a location onto a street. And here, here it is from the private location just going onto, onto the street. And I uh, got an image, I displayed that image, that satellite image of that, um, which of course is time-coded. Uh, but I, I displayed that on X already. Well, you know, this, the, it's a sample. It's a sample. All of this. There's no escape. There's no, no escape for any of these people. Now, some of the information, it, it, this, this might sound confusing, sounded like it was people because you have people that are partial witnesses, uh, people that overheard certain things. There's, there's fragments of information that indicated that it was that, that it was the most highly likely item is that the attackers were connected to the Trump campaign somehow, a bunch of Trumpies. But here's part of the problem with that. Okay, I got you. But do I got you? Hello, do I got you? Do I got you? Do I got you? Hello? Okay, I got you. Okay. Okay, I got you. Yeah. No, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, where were we? Okay. Um, okay. Um, <sighs> shit. Uh, let me see. Um, okay. What would, have, what would seem to have lead to one direction also leads to another direction. Already, I already know that. In other words, there are other, well, government employees, but it remains to be seen which political party they're in. Now, here's part of the problem. 
when you have attacks occurring and you have people in California that don't want to investigate them and you go to the highest levels and say, hey, look, the process of elections is under attack, under attack, violent attack. So you, you end up with a situation where California doesn't want to pay their bills and the money is desperately needed. And you've relayed to them the facts that there are violent attacks occurring. You know, and this needs to be investigated. So um, it's neither here nor there whether they expressed uh, the, the, an understanding about the insurrection ongoing. The sheer fact of the matter is these people don't want to pay their bill. But here's the point in time. After a certain number of communications and you go through up, up through a certain hierarchical level, there become serious questions as to who are the parties that are involved in the violent attacks. You know, this is to say that, so, um, yeah, no, I just, yeah. But, okay, uh, back to violent attacks. So there's there's serious question. There's serious question as to um, who's involved in these violent attacks. And these violent attacks are different than the, the legal attacks, the electronic attacks. So I can't say without having more evidence on the table. I've got major fragments that any investigator would say, yeah, you have more than a right to reasonably, reasonably believe that certain events would add up and spell a certain thing that, that, that the, you know, that this would, certain things would happen certainly. But so it's a problem though. The curiosity here is why wouldn't so-called, you know, if you, you look at this, why wouldn't Democrats be interested in making sure that people get funding that's owed to them so they could provide adequate security and do investigations uh, to pursue and prosecute these parties involved in these horrible violent actions. You know, this is, this is a big item because you would think that they would be assessing this in their head as to whether or not these violent acts against the process of elections, the violent acts against me, an archiver, a candidate, uh, that they might think that these were coming from Trump people. And therefore, wouldn't they be motivated to, well, live up to, number one, live up to their constitutional oath to begin with and protect archives protect archivers, protect candidates in the process of elections and be motivated to say, yeah, that sounds like stuff that's connected to Trump. Go after him. But the situation is, no, they don't want to pay their bills. No, they, they are not motivated to do independent investigations. They don't want to participate. They flatly refuse to participate. This is big, huge flashing red lights and, and flags and bells and everything. So, so I can't say that, you know, it, that, you know, the possibility that some of these people are actually connected to Democratic forces on their agenda, whatever that might be, because, you know, there's only certain instances involving certain direct, where I directly witnessed certain things, caught certain people red-handed, that led to certain uh, understanding that there were certain people involved, which were perceived to be connected to Trump people. Um, but there's other pieces of evidence that... was manifested that looked like a false signature 
Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, how do I explain this? Okay, um, okay, this can get heavy for people that may not. Okay, the, the, um, in false signature, um, spray paint was used. There was damage, attacks, robberies, and spray paint was used. Uh, computers were stolen. Data and material pertaining to national security was stolen. Uh, data pertaining to legal research was stolen. Evidence was stolen. Archival material stolen. Material pertaining to the process of election. Okay. The spray paint signatures, when I looked up and researched the this, this spray paint signatures, I came up with multiple answers. And the problem was there was a signature problem as to the style of the spray paint signature that was used. Um, different words were used that might be indicative to indicate that somebody was trying to lay a false direction as to indicating the possibility of origin, source. And I found some matches that indicated basically the tactic being described to be used coming from what apparently, apparently from the sources I got, um, had been identified as Russian sourced. In other words, intelligence determined that um, certain materials were captured or apprehended somehow that indicated how to tell people to do certain things and leave false signaturing. And there were these, there are tendencies to this false signaturing that would seem to match. Now, it's neither here nor there whether that would actually come out to be accurate at the point, but it is a piece of information that is up on the investigative tactical table. So it lays a doubt as to the activity origins because the activity origins don't match certain types of activity. What types of, okay, um, uh, okay, look how do I say this. Um, if you have vandalism done, for instance, in certain areas, there are signatures to vandalism. And if, you ha if people end up doing spray paint, there are signatures to the type of people who are involved in certain actions. And when I see a signature that does not match what would be a locally identified signature to what would be the norm, to what would be identified, you know, from, you know, from um, a policing standpoint, identified to a signature that would match locals. And I'm, it didn't match. It did not match. The material respective to um, locals didn't seem to match unless the locals had received and took training from the Russians because that's that that is the signature that that is part of what it was you would read into the signaturization of what happened which means that could be a possibility but certain people did certain things wrong and it's it's yeah well 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 no i'm just you know okay well yeah it's well yeah no 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 see the my, yeah 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 my point yeah local law enforcement yes would understand certain things about certain signatures that would be local because you know they're going to have this huge sampling of it and i'm saying that some of that there were places they display certain amounts of this stuff and you see it yourself you see it all you have to do is walk around and drive around in different locations 
any location. You can go to any location any given time, spend a little bit of time, and look at the local graffiti and look at this and that. There's signatures to it, and you can tell it. So when you get something and you're analyzing it and you pop it through, there's an instant match, then there's, there's an anomaly to it. So here's my problem. Now, here, now here's the problem I have. The problem I have is the moment that it is no longer a perfect signature, or let's say within the parameters, then the question about it's the question about the fact that it has certain flaws to it indicates that somebody was laying a false signature, making it appear as though certain other people were involved when signature doesn't check out, which means that if somebody's basically creating a form of signature forgery in this method, now we don't necessarily know who's involved in doing that, you know. So, yeah, so we, you know, you, so at this point, you don't know whether these people are Democrats, Republicans, or Russian spies, or, or who they are, you know, you know, foreign, domestic, whatever. Uh, you only have certain key facts that you know. And the certain key facts is that the process of elections has been attacked, an archive has been attacked, an archive has been attacked. Items have been stolen, okay? Material pertaining to national security has been stolen. Material pertaining to the process of elections, um, artifacts, so forth, etc. cetera. Uh, research, you know, okay, all kinds of stuff. So, um, so you have to leave it. I, I'm stuck with leaving this certain thing at where it is without going through uh, intensive SAR data. If I go through intensive SAR data, I'm going to get the dots. All of these people, there's no escape. All of these people are there. There's overlapping satellites. I found all the sources. Well, I found some of the, enough sources where the material is, is already been recorded. It's in various archives. It's, it's recorded all over the world. And that data can all be reworked. And that means that that means that you know everybody comes up. You know, you, SAR can see a blade of grass. It can see a blade of grass, and, and most of them were recorded at 30 frames a second, uh, upwards to 60 frames a second. In fact, I found a bunch of a bunch of data that was recorded at 60 frames a second that I can get a hold of. Now, to to be able to do that, I have to use enormous computer processing to do that. No. Well, okay, there's too many instances. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, it's too many instances. Therefore, I'm not going to say it's too expensive, but who pays the bill, that's not going to be my problem. You know, all costs are guaranteed. By the United States. I'm a candidate. We have insurrection. When it comes to a candidate, all costs are guaranteed. So, yeah, so, okay, let me, let me jump over to some of the big, some of the problems. Okay, well, let me jump over to certain information I want to cover. If we're looking at the, the easiest, most retrievable evidence that is also cross-verifiable, then we're looking at court records, we're looking at DMV data, uh, we're looking at phone data, government employees, we're, we're looking at agencies data, uh, departments data. Um, this, is, this is where you have certain records that are never supposed to be interfered with, never supposed to disappear. And in some of the instances, you have factors that involve um, the information replicating to the Justice Department, for instance. Certain data is copied by the Justice Department, so it's shared federally. It's also shared multi-state. So when you're dealing with that type of information, now this type of data, again, it's, it's multi-replicated. So we have things like Arkansas data, California data, log check, cross records, all this other stuff. This is where the, the information coming in has a certain signature 
of connectivity that's the strongest connected to Democrats. Because this is when you have um, certain parties that did certain things. In other words, uh, they fabricated false citations. Uh, you end up with a situation where Arkansas is consulted, you know, when data is requested, like for instance, we have years and years, I'm going back and forth between states, you have um, data that's requested and it goes to a request from Arkansas and then it comes in and then California doesn't want to respect the data and invents a fallacy. So, so you have, you know, we're talking, you know, you got insurance on file, you've got, uh, you know, your tags are paid, all your taxes are paid, you know, everything is completely current and active, and then you have these parties that they just don't want to pay attention to anything. They're going to fabricate something. And then you have Arkansas that investigates it and says, um, what are these people in California doing? This is ridiculous. Uh, they're not cooperating uh, with uh, laws of other states and the reality of monies paid for, you know, registration services, whatever. So let me let me well let me let me let me get to the point. The, let me let me get to the point of the rope a dope. The rope a dope factor is that California and the connection to these Democrats. And I'm not saying that there isn't connection to certain Republicans. You know, I mean, well, I got to be complete. You know, I got to be completely honest. I'm saying that um, if I say that I've done different percentages of investigations pertaining to different areas, that's basically the truth. So, in other words, there's certain data that's just inescapable. You know, there's just no way around it. It's inescapable uh, of what these people did, you know. And, but, and, as, and as far as a chase, a tracing the political alignment to all these different people, uh, that is not 100% verified with each and every entity. You know, there, you know I've, I've had limitations on funding and accessibility and some of this stuff you have to do at different levels and you have to, you know, but essentially it is, it is, it, it, I'm going, you go with the overall high point signatures and if, let, well, let me try to nutshell it. Let me try to nutshell it. If I'm trying to nutshell this. Basically you have people that keep putting an electronic false record into the system and it replicates through the computers goes nationwide, goes multi-state, and this is false information. So when the parties do this, this is the replication of false data in a government computer. That's a felony. So the use of government computers for false data is a felony. And they do this. They've done this repeatedly, repeatedly. Now, transmitting data through a government system that in fact when the data is false is an additional felony. So what we have is this big huge list of charges of all the times that these parties did this. Now there's you got other modifiers and the other modifiers are who did they do it to? And this is when a person is, is brought into court and they say okay well you did this this is connected you did this and by the way, you did this to an archiver. That's an additional felony charge because it's, it's, it's also pertained to be an attack on an archiver. When it's a candidate, that's yet again an additional charge too. You're talking about felony charges, again, because they're attacking a candidate. So... There's also the factor that as time goes on, you can have additional charges because the law says if anybody's activity leads to additional damage or activities, that 
the parties would also face additional charges for their activity. So this, by the way, this is also a RICO at this point. You have a, you have a, a RICO problem because you have multiple participants that are all refusing uh, to cooperate and are all involved in criminal activity. The law says, you know, you identify three people, that's it. It's a RICO. You know, that's, you know. So when you have an additional factor that a security problem is created and or it's not determined who all the parties are, keep in mind the law has a blanket area that says it doesn't matter what these people think their intent was. Well, yes, but no. Not at a treason level. Yes. Yeah, because there's these certain levels where, uh, at, at, in espionage, you know, the, uh, there's certain levels where people's intent doesn't matter. They did it. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, so yeah, but my, yeah, you're right. It's still, though, that at some point in time, there is a, still a fragment of criminal intent behind what the parties did, regardless, which, yes, locks them right back in. So, yeah, yeah, yes, 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 that's what I'm saying, is that their activities ended up happening eventually, leading to the theft of. Of, of national security information, leading to the destruction of artifacts, leading to, yes, the, yeah, the whole list, yes, yes. So these people are connected, according to definition of law, by legal description, they're screwed. Well, yeah, everybody wants, yeah, everybody's going to want to always try to downsize it. That's their trick. They want to downsize it and then try to remove it and change the categories around. And then once they do that, they turn around and say, oh, well, we have this other technicality that lets us not care and, and allows us to do all these other things like nothing. But that's not going to happen. Yeah. That's right. I know. Yeah, I refuse to yield. I refuse to yield on the areas. So, uh, well, I can get into that other portion later. I can cover that later with you. But let me let me go on with this. So, what these people are doing though is they're wasting my time. They keep posting electronics, and you end up in a situation as, as you're you at a location someplace sooner or later, and some cop runs you, you know, or, you know, maybe they got an auto scan, whatever it is, and says, hey, man, uh, you know, uh, you got a warrant. And I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, right. I says, this is what it's connected to, and it's all bogus. It all goes back to reissuances of false material. So you have this, this perpetual uh, connection that goes all the way back to this false material. You're, you're, we're going all the way back to, like, 2008. Whether yeah, there's there's other material about other things that go back um, in other dates, and there's the civil archive, civil rights archive area. There's other people's cases. I don't know what there is. There's like more more than 170 cases from other people, something like that. But you know, but without going further back, if I'm just staying into trying to focus on material from say 2005, 2008 to present. We've got a whole big, huge series of falsities where these party, party, you know, basically the point I'm trying to make is they're doing a rope-a-dope. You know, they want to keep trying to issue false tickets, making me endlessly go into court. Then when you show up in court and you explain what it is, they don't even want to put it on the books. These people are, these people are almost shaking because I'm like, no, I want to prosecute these people. You know, and you can do a lot of this on the phone. You explain to them, here's the evidence. Here's the electronic records. Pull the records. And they'll say, oh, we can't tell you anything. I says, pull the records. I'm going to tell you over the phone what's on those records. 
this is what's on those records. And I tell them. And it says, and this is what it means. And this is wrong. And by the way, Arkansas has reviewed this. And I'm right. I'm cited with. There is no evidence whatsoever to any of these charges. They're all fabricated. You know, you cannot run around and continuously keep electronically putting and then ending up inventing more evidence that's all based upon a foundation of the beginning of erroneous evidence. But this is what these people keep doing. So, you know, they keep pulling, this stuff gets pulled off the books. And then I had one time I had, this is years ago, I had a, a, a determination, this is an analyst saw that the file was inactive and, and replaced it into active state. But the problem is the court doesn't, the courts of the few times that I would actually get to the point of bothering to go to courts or telling them, look, I'm demanding prosecution. Oh, well, we can't do that. I said, sure you can. You record your phone calls, right? Well, yeah, all, all phone calls are recorded in case someone's a terrorist. I says, yeah, well, you guys have been in felony territory for a long time, and the attorneys have said a long time ago, since none of y'all want to resolve this, you're deeply in felony territory, and the law is clear. I can record everybody. I've been recording some of these people for years because they, I keep catching them lying. You know, I got these people trying to claim falsely, like, well, you called up and said, yada, 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 all this. I says, no, I didn't. I got a copy right here. Let me play the tape for you. I've even had in instances where I played, played recordings for these people because they sat there and blatantly lied to me, and I paid, played a recording back of exactly what happened that showed that, that showed that they were blatantly lying. And I says, look, I'm demanding that these people be prosecuted. And, you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The evidence is in their court. They don't need my participation personally. They have the evidence in hand that the evidence is erroneous on the electronic records, yet it's connected to these people. That's all the proof they need to begin an investigation and begin the arrest sequence. They've got valid charges right there. You know, so these people keep doing this, this, this rope-a-dope thing, reposting these electronic items. So you end up with these other items where, where then all of a sudden you get, you get these different items that are erroneous, that are based upon an erroneous, previous erroneous, and you get those thrown out, and then those come back again. So you end up with a series of all of this, these erroneous creations by these people. And they have this horrible audacity. Well, why don't you take care of your problem? Look, number one, I have been trying to take care of, excuse me, mandatory prosecutions of parties attacking the process of elections, attacking a candidate, attacking an archiver, you know, and they, they just, uh, what? Yeah, uh, these people don't want to do their job. There's this conspiracy all of a sudden that nobody wants to do their job. You know, they constantly run into this. Nobody wants to cooperate. They don't want to do the job. The moment that they see that someone's trying to go for evidence, they don't want to cooperate. You know, and this goes all the way up the hierarchical ladder to people. You know, it goes all the way up to Kamala Harris. You know, and her prosecutorials, you know. So I'm a presidential candidate before she's even a presidential candidate. But she's in dereliction of duty, refusing to protect the Constitution of the United States. She's refusing to protect items adhered to the Constitution of the United States. Archivers, candidates, protecting artifacts, protecting national security. You know, and this goes on and on and on. You got information. We look, we've got federal disclosure there's spies and they didn't have enough information to convict them but they found enough information to prove that they're a spy reason to believe and that they are still operating but part of the investigation discovered this on the side and it's outside the scope which is supposed to have a tighter focus particular to one investigation but it just happened to pop up happened to get you know noticed in in, in the course of the investigation California has zero investigations, as far as I can tell, regarding spies. 
parties interfering with the process of election. This is, this is an anomaly sequence when you consider 